cheating ex-wife threatened to keep me from seeing my children if I didn't break up with my girlfriend. I think this is her way of crawling back to me. Hey, true story. New subscriber to your channel. I want to say up front that I'm not one who doesn't believe in relationships. I definitely do believe in relationships and believe there's someone for everyone out there. I no longer believe in marriage, though. Never, ever. I can't do that again. I've been divorced for two years now. Since my divorce, my ex-wife has remarried and divorced again. I'm just now getting into a relationship with someone I've been seeing for eight months now. For eight months, we just hang out and go on dates and, and of course, have sex, but never made anything exclusive until now. We both posted pictures, well, she posted pictures on Facebook and tagged me in them, of a trip to Gatlinburg we took. My ex-wife caught wind, probably through one of her family members, and she called me to scold me on having a girlfriend, asking if I vetted her correctly because she could be a psycho. So true, my girlfriend, Jess, has never met my kids, ever. My kids had no idea that their father had a girlfriend. Jess does not have any children at all. She focused on her career, and when she was ready, well, her biological clock hit the wall. And she's okay with that. She's not upset about it. That's the risk she took. Jess and, Jess and I are both 44 years old. Jess is a doctor, a dermatologist that has her own practice in town. She does very well for herself. When we met for the first month, neither one of us knew what each other did for a living. We met in a cooking class. I know, guys, it probably sounds corny that I was in a cooking class, but my ex-wife used to do all of the cooking. I never cooked. I grill, and that's what I actually do when my kids are over at my house. And for myself sometimes, but regularly, I'd order from a food prep place in my town. Jess was sort of in the same boat as me. She did the same things. She said she never was a good cook. We ended, we ended up partnering in the class for a teen meal project. We'd both just crack jokes and talk about movies when we talked. When I was asking her out on a date, the first few times, the dates were such active dates, we didn't really have time to sit and chat. And it's not like we talked on the phone all night like young love bugs do. We both have busy careers. I'm an accountant, by the way. I believe it was our third date. She was asking me what I did for a living. And that's when we both discovered our careers and laughed about how we didn't know that about each other up front because we were so busy having fun together and enjoying each other's company. That date was at dinner. And that night, she found out that I was divorced and had two children. She wasn't turned off at all. We continued our fun together, eventually started staying the night at each other's houses, and here we are today. She owns her own townhouse, and I rent a condo. We don't plan to move in together. We like how the relationship is now. But my ex-wife, she is ticked off. She told me that I shouldn't have women prancing around her kids. Yes, she said her kids. This is the same woman that had a young man around my daughter right after the divorce was finalized. My daughter told me she was dating some young guy who plays D1 basketball at the nearby college here. The kid was only trying to F my ex-wife, which he did. When he was done with her, he left her. My daughter told me he'd come over all the time and watch movies with her mother. And, and she said he and mommy would go to bed together. This isn't the guy she married, though. She married some other dude who was an ex-basketball player. By the way, during our divorce process, she told me she had no business marrying a white guy. She's always been attracted to black athletic guys since high school. She married some ex-basketball player. He played overseas and was a superstar in high school. Their marriage lasted less than a year before he left her. She said he was a cheater and he was trying to use her. This woman is psycho. I tried to get full custody of my children when she told me she was getting married, 
and that fell through. She claimed she always known the guy for years and they were just friends when we were married. It turned out that they met on Tinder. She's effing disgusting and the courts don't care. They don't care who she brings around my kids. Strange men from the internet. When my ex-wife called me, I thought it was about the kids because it started off cool and she said she needed to speak with me. She then followed with, so I know you've been seeing someone and I want to know how long have you known her and what does she do for a living because I refuse to give you my children if some stranger will be around them. She called me a liar when I said she's never met our kids and I don't plan on doing so anytime soon. This is how I knew she was jealous. She told me, so when did you start liking younger girls? Jess's Facebook is private, so if she tried snooping, she wouldn't see much. She couldn't see her age or where she worked, etc. But Jess is beautiful. You can see in the profile. She modeled actually in college. She's a health freak as far as working out and takes really good care of herself. She actually introduced me to the health food delivery company that she used. Like I said, I used one for myself because I didn't cook often. She was in the same boat but used a company that's more healthy than the one I use. We both cook these days sometimes together, and we meal prep. I told my ex-wife that I'm not into young girls at all. I only date women my age. She said that I was such a liar, and I'm going to end up in jail for robbing the cradle. She then said if she doesn't get any information on this new friend of mine, and I don't confirm that she's sane, then I will not get my children alone anymore. So where am I now, True? I am meeting with my lawyer soon. Just helped me find one. I told him everything and my ex-wife kept her word. She doesn't allow me to come get the kids. She has told their school that I was not allowed to see my children and it was the judge's order. I have that recorded. The principal telling me. I told the principal when I was at the school that I was recording this and she was okay with it. She told me that my ex-wife stated that the judge took away my privilege to see my children because I have to reg register as an offender. Wow. No, she did not. No, she did not. True story. Can you believe this crap? She's effing crazy and it's, and it's all lies. My ex-wife told the principal that her lawyer will be sending over documentation stating this. Like I said, it's all recorded, and I told the principal that it's all lies and I will get full custody of my children. My ex-wife is pure evil and upset because I have a friend. I think she just wants me back. I don't know what she might I don't know what she might do. She may try to leave the state with the kids. This crap hurts, man. Jess knows everything and she's been by my side. She said we'll make sure that she's not around my kids until we get this all handled because she doesn't want me to lose the children. Plus, Jess is the one who got me in contact with the lawyer. He's dealt with several fathers getting full custody of their children and has succeeded. It's Jess's younger cousin. Wish me luck, True. I'll keep you posted. Wow. Dude, your, oh, your ex-wife is grimy. So hold on, yeah, document everything. Smart for recording that, I would think. So she went to the school and told them, oh, he has to register as an offender. He shouldn't be like, whoa, you can't be saying that about people. Oh, yeah, dude, I hope this lawyer buries her and you get full custody. This is not right. This is not cool. Is she on drugs or something? Well, like, what is wrong with her? Oh my gosh. What does she do? Who? Ugh. God, I mean, please keep us posted on this one, man. Guys, let me know what you think about this. Let's check out another story. Ex-wife regrets cheating. She is now in jail. Karma is a B. <laughs> New listener here. I've heard two stories so far that intrigued me to send in my story. Judging by those two I listened to, I believe you would love this one. Today, I am happy to say that I am a single man. No children with a great career. 
as an electrician, residential wireman. I am also an adjunct instructor for a local junior college here. I do well for myself, and I'm so glad I dodged this bullet. I almost made the biggest mistake of my life. I thought I struck gold when I met my ex. Beautiful, smart, and fun to be around. We officially met while I was on another date in June of 2021, right when things were slowly opening up in my state after the pandemic. I wasn't laid off from my position, but after work during that time, there was nothing to do but go home and stay inside. We had rules set up in our office where only so many people could be in at once. We'd have to schedule when one of us was coming in to grab equipment. No more pairing up for jobs as far as commuting. Just riding solo, sometimes two different cities. I got pretty lonely, lol. After going home one night, I decided to download Tinder. I initially just wanted someone to talk to, I swear. I never had any intentions on hooking up or anything. I really was just bored and was missing talking with people. I met a lot of women there, and some of them were married, oh yeah. They'd say that they were separated from their husbands, and some even said their husbands was okay with it, sort of like the open relationship thing. I never spoke with those women for long periods. But my ex and another woman I spoke to often, to the point where I went out on a date with one, and ironically, my ex was working at the restaurant we went to. I had no idea she worked there, as she told me that she was a caretaker. Which she was, but apparently she was working as a waitress for some extra money then. She quit once her and I started dating, but it's so funny how this all played out. Anyway, while I'm on a date with another woman I was talking to while talking to my ex, all as friends, trying to get to know each other, my ex and I noticed each other when she was coming towards our table. She wasn't our waiter, but she was for the table behind us. We saw each other, smiled, said hey, and that was it. Later that night, my ex texts me and says, She was cute, but I look much better. Not gonna lie, she was telling the truth. After that incident, my now ex, her text, her text messages and calls became more frequent. Before, she would be sometimey with texting meaning we'd be consistently texting for a week, then she'd disappear for a week. But after that night, she was hitting me up every day. Asked to make sure I was not talking to anyone else. Mm -hmm, that's exactly what she was doing. <laughs> My ex and I ended up dating for about seven months before we both decided to be exclusive. We clicked very well. I was pleasantly surprised because... I never intended on getting serious with someone from Tinder. Anyway, we did, and in October of 2022, I proposed to her. Stupidly, I thought she was worth it. Our families loved each other. She wanted kids and a family, like myself. We both had our own leases, apartments, and the plan was to move in together once our leases were up, mine August and hers October in 2023. She made sure to tell me over and over again, I am not to have any dancers at my bachelor party. She said this to my brother as well, who was my best man, and he'd laugh. Okay, sure, you got it. I knew what that meant, but after talking to my brother, I told him not to. I did that for her. So at my bachelor party, there were no dancers. We had a Madden tournament, ate junk food, and drank alcohol. She was not to have any dancers as well. She told me she wouldn't because she thinks it's disgusting and her maid of honor said there 100% will not be any dancers. I truly believed all they did was watch a movie and drink wine. That's exactly what my ex told me happened. After I was asking her if she enjoyed her party when we spoke that night, Little did I know, the woman I was about to marry did the nasty with multiple dancers that night in her apartment, screaming YOLO. I saw the video, 
and it hurt my soul. To even think I got it in with this woman, all after some big buff guys had their way with my ex, our parties were the weekend prior to the wedding. We had sex darn near every night after our bachelor and bachelorette parties. So freaking disgusting. And she did not use protection with any of those guys. I saw the whole darn thing. So we got married in March of this year. Everyone's happy, having a great time. We head out for our flight the next morning to Puerto Rico for our honeymoon. We were to spend a week out there. Didn't make it past one night. Well, I didn't. We were drinking heavily the first night and do what and do what newlyweds do. Afterwards, she got a call from her sister and asking if she could send a particular wedding video that the sister took on my ex's phone. My ex is going through her gallery and she giggles and says, What a night to remember. I hear her and I can see clearly. She's laying right below me in the bed. In between my legs, she thinks I'm dozed off. I see a large Johnson behind the play button. My, <laughs> my ex had some video with some huge guy in there. I didn't say anything. And she scrolled back up and sent the video her sister was asking for. I pretended I didn't see anything. My plan was to go through her phone to see what that was about. Yes, it could have been just some e-hub stuff she had in there, but I had a gut feeling it was something I needed to see. I've always known her passcode because she gave it to me before when I needed to do something on her phone, and luckily, she never changed it. I stayed up until 3 a.m. that night, already exhausted. I needed to get into that phone. She was knocked out cold. I go for the phone, and sure enough, same passcode. I go straight into her gallery and look at videos. The date of her bachelorette parties were filled with events that went down at the party. I take her phone outside to the balcony and shut the door. And I start watching. Johnson swinging, kissing, slapping everything. My wife not only was giving blows to guys... But in multiple videos, these dancers were having their way with her, along with other women, and the ladies are just cheering it on. My ex was screaming out YOLO and doing all kinds of disgusting things. I wanted to puke. I tossed the phone on the bed. She was still asleep. I grabbed my things and I left. I still had some hair soap and things like that in the bathroom. I didn't care. I left. Just got my clothes, phone, and I left. I paid a reschedule fee to get the returning flight that day. The flight was not until noon, so I sat at the airport just thinking about how disgusted I was. My only thoughts were to get checked for diseases and divorce her. She texted me asking if I was grabbing breakfast or something around 10 a.m. I texted her back. You are disgusting. I saw the video of you at your bachelorette party. What were you thinking? You cheated on me with three different guys, then came home and slept with me. What the F is wrong with you? We are getting a divorce. I can't believe I married you. She replied, that was not me in the videos doing that stuff. This gaslighting ticked me off. I, I clearly saw my ex sucking and taking it from a group of guys. I said, F you. I saw the videos. We are done. I'm going home. Texting. Babe, I'm sorry. It's not my fault. They must have put something in my drink because I don't remember doing that. Why would I record this? I'm not going to lie. When I read that text, I wanted to believe this. Maybe they did take advantage of her. Oh my gosh, that's possible. Then I remembered when she said, what a night to remember with a giggle. I replied, I'm not effing stupid. The fact that you try to lie to me, knowing I'm telling the truth, ticks me off more. We are done. When I get back home, the first thing was to get tested. I didn't even schedule with my primary care. I went to urgent care and again followed up with my main doctor. I was clean. Thank God. I was so worried. By the way, I'm just now getting divorced. As I'm writing this, it's August 1st. Now I'm finally divorced. 
It took four months to get her out of my life. I have to tell you what transpired during that whole time. and It was an effing roller coaster. In April, she was served at her place. That same day, she shows up at my place and assaults me, spits in my face, scratches my face, whilst calling me the biggest piece of crap on earth. And she's suing me for wasting her time. Yeah, she threatened to sue me for wasting her precious time and said I'm going to jail after leaving her stranded like that. I don't know how she managed to get home. My guess, bought another flight, but I called the police after that scratch. She indeed was arrested, not only for assaulting me, but resisting arrest and assaulting an officer. She spat at the officer. It landed on his shirt. This is why divorce, this is why the divorce took so long. Could have been over quicker. The divorce was held up because of her hearings and all of which she was dealing with regarding the assault. Once she was sentenced, I was able to get the divorce finalized. To, and she signed what she needed to with no issue. She is currently serving eight months in jail. She was facing two to five years. Talk about karma. You lie to me, cheated on me at your bachelorette party, threatened to sue me after I filed for divorce, assaulted me, now look at you, behind bars. Sweet karma, I love it. My whole thought when I left her in Puerto Rico was to get the marriage annulled. According to several lawyers I spoke with, including the woman I hired, cheating is not grounds for an annulment. She would have had to commit some type of fraud, lies about her identity and some other stuff that was said. I just wanted out as quickly as possible. But she went to jail with several charges pinned on her. I've had my apartment door kicked in by her family members. My tires have been flattened and passenger door kicked in. The cousin who kicked in my apartment door, I believe, kicked in my car door as well. He is nowhere to be found, but I have filed a police report. Man, I was scared for my life. I don't own a firearm. My brother is currently helping me get one now. I never ever intended on owning a weapon, but after that night, I wanted one. I'm taking classes as I've never touched or seen a firearm in real life. Her cousin has a warrant out for his arrest and is already in, and is already a convicted felon. He didn't hit me, but he got in my face and grabbed me, and grabbed me by the collar. Are you familiar with the wrestler OMOS? He's Nigerian. That's her cousin. No lie. Not her actual cousin, but looks and built exactly like him. The dude is huge. If he wasn't a criminal, he could have easily been a professional athlete. Her parents have threatened me. It's been a disaster, man. I just wish this crap I just wish this crap will all go away. This woman's family is crazy. Yes, I'm ecstatic that her butt is in jail but I'm still dealing with the consequences of marrying a whore. Guys, true is right. It just isn't worth it. Don't be like me. I'm currently in talks with a cousin about moving to Oregon. My lease is up at the end of August. I've already told the office here that I will not be renewing. It's either go stay with my family until I find something else or move to Oregon, at least for a year or two. My cousin is also in the same line of work as me, and can at least get me a job with his company as a wireman. I enjoy teaching too, so if I do leave, I'll see about picking up another adjunct job as well. But young men, take my story and learn from it, please. I divorced the woman, and now look, I'm still dealing with this crap. I'll follow up with you, True, to keep you posted on what happened next. I'm strongly considering the move. Take care and keep a lookout for my next email. I want to congratulate you too. You put together a wonderful thing with your channel. Glad I found your channel. Thanks. Alright guys, so we have part two here. Oh man. Part two. Hey, I'm back. I sent you the story about my ex going to jail for assault after I served her with divorce. My mom got an ICS call from the ex-wife begging to get into contact with me. As my mom told it, she said none of her family is helping her and she's starving. Told my mom the food is horrible and she needs money. My mom refused 
to get her in contact with me and threatened to press more charges. She keeps calling and harassing. The same day I emailed you my story, I got a letter in the mail. Guess who it was from? Yep, the ex-wife. These screenshots are probably horrible for you to read, so I'll just write that. So I'll just write what it says. Dear love, I firstly would like to apologize to you. What I did to you, I could never take it back. It only makes sense to come clean. Yes, I did have sex with the dancers at the party. Uh, yeah, he knows. He saw the video. <laughs> she, she tried to gaslight him. That wasn't me. Wow. <laughs> at the party. I thought it was out. I thought it was our last day to be free before we said I do. I was sure you were going to take advantage and do so yourself. So I thought it was okay. I'm still not sure if you did sleep with any dancers or anyone, but I'll never know. But I'm 90% sure you slept with someone. Wow. I don't care if you did though. I'd forgive you. Because that's the night when you're supposed to be free, just one last time. I did not intend for it to be multiple guys, just one guy whom I did know from college. I was already familiar with him, so I thought it would be okay. But it was dumb of my friend to film it. I can't believe she did that to me. Wow. <laughs> She's just blaming everybody else. If we can unite and be together once I'm released, I sure hope we can remain friends. Also, I'm all alone in here. No one is helping me, my parents or anyone. I've lost 18 pounds and I'm so hungry and malnourished. Please, if you can find it in your heart to help me out, money is something I desperately need or I'm afraid I won't make it in here. Love you forever. Whoa. <laughs> Get the heck out of here. I balled up the paper after reading it. Then I thought, I need to send this to her parents. I made several copies of it. As you can tell in the picture, the paper is wrinkled. The copies came out well enough, though, to read physical copies. I sent them to her parents and other family members. Her cousin who kicked in my door was arrested good good i was worried about that dude he was caught with a loaded weapon drugs that contained fat the car was reported stolen he was on the news plus i was alerted by the police that he was captured him being a convicted felon i'm sure he's going down for a very long time as of right now i have no idea if i'd have to come back here and testify but i indeed will I'm currently at my parents, but I decided to go stay with my cousin in Oregon. He for sure says he can get me a job at his company with no problem. Dude, I'm getting the F out of here. Who knows if they may send more people at me. Someone mentioned, why didn't I send the video and pictures to her parents? I don't want to get in trouble for RP. Dude, they all, they all were literally sucking and effing in the video. I don't care if her parents don't believe me. I know what I saw on her phone. But what I did do was send them all copies of, the, of her letter. So hopefully that is enough because she's admitting things in the letter. Her dumb self is serving time now and her cousin will be too. I should have vetted the, I should have vetted the entire family before marrying that woman. They are all nuts. My flight is tomorrow morning. I was asking my cousin if it'll be okay if I just relax for a week or two when I get there. I just need to clear my head. I'm still paying him even though he told me not to. I have plenty of money saved. I usually don't spend much. My parents wanted me to stay at least during the upcoming weekend holiday. But I just want to get out of here. I read the comments and honestly, reading those just made me feel stupid. Your listeners are all correct. Why would I marry someone I met on Tinder? Dude, I was just dumb and could have thrown my life away. What if her cousin pulled that weapon out on me? What if I actually did have a weapon and defended myself? Yeah, it'll be self-defense, but I'd still have to live with that on my mind. It just It's just best if I get the F out of here.
It's cool that I basically will be able to do the same line of work, just different company. I'm not too bummed about leaving the teaching job. Though I enjoy it, it's just a little bit more extra money. Adjuncts don't get paid much and I didn't sign on to work this semester after going through what I was going through. I've taken so much comfort in your videos and once I get settled in at my cousin's, I wouldn't mind starting my own YouTube channel. Anyway, that's in the future, hopefully. If I do start it, you could shout me out and help me build it. Sure, I, yeah, no problem, dude. Anyway, hopefully things work out for me. Thanks for reading my story and thank you to your listeners. You guys do not hold back and I do appreciate that. Thanks for listening to my story. Wow. Part 3. My New Life What up, True? Hope all is good your way. I didn't think I'd be writing you again, but some crap has transpired. So my ex was released. Oh, crap. Oh, man. What did she do? I found out through a friend. I'm currently in Oregon with my cousin I told you about, and I'm working. But I'm worried about my parents. My parents have been receiving threats via notes left on the door. My mom, my mom is terrified, but my father says that he can't wait to use his new shotgun. <laughs> okay. They also have a dog as well. So one note had been left. So one note was left at the door that read, Your son destroyed someone's life and someone has to pay. Now, my parents took that to the police, and I've also talked with the police as well. And they know that there's a restraining order in place with me and my ex. The police says they can't do anything. My parents didn't have cameras at the time, and neither do their neighbors. My parents actually are in the process of selling their home and moving to a small condo they already own. My dad has cameras up now, and... And they will be moving in another month. But this just ticks me off, man. I had no idea she was released until someone back home told me. It just makes me wonder if it was her or did she have family do it. How did I ruin her life? She spat at the police, not me. My mom has record of her calling her from jail basically harassing. But the police still says they can't do anything. What kind of crap is that? I'd hate for my dad to have to harm someone. I'm putting them through this bullcrap just because my dumb self married a bee I met off Tinder. I'm so effing stupid, man. Besides me worrying about my parents and calling them every day to check on them, I am doing pretty well out here in Oregon. It's not a bad place at all. I'm getting paid more here than I was before, which is awesome. Living with my cousin is actually pretty cool. He's got me hip to this game called Starfield, which is pretty good. I didn't game much before coming here, but it's been fun playing all kinds of games with him and his buddies, online and in person at his house. When I hear some people write you and tell you that they are in new relationships or they can't wait to find the one after being cheated on, I think they are nuts. I can't imagine ever being in another relationship. Yeah, I still like women. But dude, I don't trust these hoes at all. <laughs> my cousin has always been that way. He didn't make it to my wedding, but he, he said when he heard about it, his thoughts was, why? Why? I said, darn, cuz, you could have called me. Gave me a warning. We just laugh about it now. I suggested my I suggested to my parents that they move out this way. They're both retired, and we have plenty of family here. But my dad says no one is gonna run him out of anywhere. My mom was super down for it, but dad doesn't want to leave. My dad is best friends with a sheriff, so that's good to know, I guess. My mom requested that they have police escort them to their new home when they move. And she wants patrol to come by at night at random hours and offer to pay just to see if anything looks suspicious. My mom even went onto Facebook and made a post about the note. I don't know what she thought that would do, 
But anyway, thanks for listening to my story, man. It's cool that you do this. Guys, if you guys want to take anything from my story, take that getting married is a complete waste of time. These women are effing nuts. Having unprotected sex at bachelorette parties, being abusive, etc. It's over. I don't care what anyone says. Screw marriage or committing to these terrorists. It's not worth it. Thanks. (laughs) He is done. Yo. (laughs) I completely understand. He is done. He is done. When I first when I first made my first video on here, I said it. I said it. I'm done. I'm not. And I stand on that today. No relationship, no marriage. Someone recently left me a comment in um, one of the videos and they said, yeah, but you preach. I understand the no marriage, but no, but no relationships. That sounds like a horrible life. Now, I want to clarify this. When I say no relationship, I don't mean I don't have friends. I don't mean I'm a hermit and don't talk to anybody. Yes, I leave. I work. I have an actual career. I hang out. I still have dinner with women. I still watch Netflix with women. When I say relationship, I mean a serious relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, living together. I will never do that again. And I will never get married. So just to clarify, um, salute to this guy, man. I was wondering how you were doing. And I think about a lot of you guys, especially when, when you, you know, you escaped like you escaped. I'm like, man, I hope they're doing good. Hope they're all right. And I don't want to just reply to reply and hit you up and say, Hey man, how's it going? Send a story. or anything. I don't want to do that. Send it on your time. I want it to be organic. I want it to be natural. And look, something happened, something transpired, and you felt the need to update. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you keeping us up to date. He said, if you want to take anything from his story, don't get married. (laughs) It's not worth it. (laughs) He called him Darius. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. If you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Whether it's a funny story, a successful story, a story where you've made it through something, you feel like you can help somebody, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. I got it up here on the screen. Catch you guys at the next one.